So we've all heard about thinking positive, maybe creating a vision board or a dream board, doing affirmations, that kind of thing to try to change our life and, and make it more, uh, uh, you know, going towards our, our dreams and visions. But what if those things aren't working as well for you as you'd like. Maybe you're just missing some part of the plot. And today I get to interview Rasul Davis, who is a life coach and has wonderful content for us about how do we manage our mind effectively in this crazy adventure called life. Um, Rasul is a Marine veteran and he is also a, um, New Yorker by birth and Californian by heart. I love that. Um, and I'm just excited to, and he calls himself the VP of the George Cal fan club, which I'm very grateful. Uh, Russell, thank you so much for being here and sharing with us today. Uh, thanks a lot, George. I appreciate the opportunity just to be here. I love hanging out with you and I know, uh, your people are definitely gonna be my people because if they love you, uh, <laughs> we're going to get along great. <laughs> so, so much, so much appreciation. So, um, tell me about life coaching. Uh, maybe we could start with a kind of a general question. Uh, why do you think life coaching is helpful for people? Uh, you know what happens is I usually have um, a tool that I use to have my clients do this. And all your people can do this now, you know, if they're watching now or if they're watching later, is I have them take the tip of their finger and I tell them, well, look at the tip of their finger. And they're like, okay, yeah, where are we going with this? <laughs> and then I tell them to take the tip of their finger and put it on the tip of their nose and ask them if they can see the tip of their finger. And they usually say no. And I say yes, because it's hidden in plain sight. You know it's there. You, you just looked at it before you touched the tip of your nose, but you can't see it. And that's usually what happens is usually we are too involved in the drama of our life. We're too emotionally attached. And someone else who is able to have, be a little more obje objective from the outside can actually see something that might be right in front of your face. Like my perfect example is now I do wear, I wear glasses. Now I have to also wear them for reading and for looking. And uh, I remember one day I was tearing the house up. I mean, literally tearing the house up looking. And someone told me that my glasses were on my head. And even better than that, I had a situation where I had the glasses on, like I have them on now, and I couldn't find them. This happened recently. <laughs> and I was like, I can't believe it. But it was right in front of my face. I couldn't feel them, I couldn't see them, and I was just tearing the house up. So that happens to all of us. It's a human experience. Yeah, for sure. No, that's a really uh, helpful perspective that, um, well, we all have blind spots, you know, and Definitely. blind spots are, are sometimes quite a, quite influential in, in our life and uh, having a life coach, somebody who's willing to kind of bring, bring those to view uh, and help us to move forward in a, in a better way. So one of the things you talk about is 50, 50 life. What does that, what does that mean? Well, what happens is, is, you know, I've been involved in personal development probably since I was like 14. I actually asked my mother to find out because half the time you don't remember these things. And uh, you know, I've been studying health and the body and the mind and all of this stuff. And the impression that I got from the self-help personal development world was, you know, you're supposed to be thinking positive. Everything's supposed to be rainbows and butterflies and unicorns all the time. And if it's not like that, you're not doing it right. And so there's a lot of times what I found uh, just in my life, what I've done to myself and what other people do is I have a lot of self-condemnation. They walk around feeling a lot of guilt and shame and um, uh, imposter uh, syndrome, things like that. And those things are, I call them really straw men or women, whatever, you want to be politically correct, right? <laughs> but, you know, the whole idea is you, you know, life is, is a, you know, a full of contrast, joy and pain, light and dark, uh, you know, and that's real life night and day and so what happens is when you understand that 50 percent of your life is going to be filled with uh feeling great and 50 percent, just to be honest is just going to suck some things just suck <laughs> you know what i mean but if you think about it think about the things you've gotten the most out of as many times when you go through the, the recent status in the marine corps you know 
embrace the suck. You go through the suck, you come out on the other side and you've learned so much, you've grown so much. And many times we learn more from the things that don't feel so good that we're willing to go through than the victories even. Yeah, I, I've discovered, I mean, I found that to be true as well. It's like, um, life isn't always going to go our way. And for a lot, and also for those who are struggling, life isn't always going to be a struggle, right? And so there's hopefully moments of relief. And, but it's, it's, yeah, if we're able, like, I mean, it's beautifully said, if you're able to embrace, um, the struggle and if you're able to have a life coach to help you along the way, it is so much, um, more meaningful and you can grow more consciously. By, by embracing it. Um, uh, can, can I comment yeah, on that? Just yeah, yeah, absolutely. A quick comment I just thought of is that uh, what usually I find in life is you have people, um, you know, I call myself a truth seeker and a truth teller. And many times when people hear that, especially when they're thinking about coaching with me, they you, people's mind always goes to the negative. You know, I want someone to tell me what's wrong with me and what I'm doing wrong. And uh, what happens is I find that human beings tend to extreme all of us, okay? So what happens is when you look at the 50-50 life, you have some people who are skewed on the positive where they just kind of walk around with a little bit of a Pollyanna type of mentality, like everything's wonderful and I'm always positive and you know, everything's great. And what happens is then something really tough happens and they're blindsided and it just totally knocks them out. And sometimes those people don't recover from it. And then the other extreme is you have some people who is as a I think a protective measure they'll just say okay they become uh, cynical and hard so much so that that way they're never going to be let down they're never going to be hurt and what they're not doing is they're not enjoying and appreciating any of the small victories or the large victories and so none of these people are dealing with the total truth whether you think it's all positive all the time or all negative all the time you're not looking at the truth. The truth is 50% of the time it's positive, 50% of the time it's gonna be feeling negative. And so if you wanna be a full human and experience the, the, the full experience of life that we all are here for, you need to accept the truth and that truth will make you free. Yeah, and accepting the truth, uh, essentially it's about managing our mind, right? Yes. So. You work with, I mean, you, you talk about something called the self-coaching model. So what is, what is that? What is it? What does that mean? How, how do we okay. use it? Disclaimer, I didn't make that up. <laughs> That's from my coach, uh, Brooke Castillo. And she said that, uh, and I wrote a little note to remind myself of where she got it from. She was studying a lot of uh, cognitive psychology, Byron Katie's work. Um, actually, Byron Katie's work is called the work. Uh, Eckhart Tolle and Abraham. And you know, through her experience with these teachers, she kind of noticed that there was a, a pattern of how things actually work pretty much in the universe. I know that sounds kind of woo-woo, but it's, there are things like gravity works here on Earth and wherever you are on Earth, no matter what tribe, what, you know, culture, that gravity is going to affect you. And so basically what happens is when you look at the uh, self-coaching model, and by the way, let me just give a little uh, precursor. Well, I, in my coaching, I've been coaching for a lot of years since probably, you know, exclusively coaching life coaching and executive coaching since probably 2011, 2012. And before that, I was a personal trainer and that kind of thing. And it used to frustrate me when I was a personal trainer and, and uh, primarily health coach. I was like, I knew there was something deeper. And it was usually the way people were thinking. And I didn't really know a way to help them help themselves in between sessions and even if they were no longer coaching with me and I came across the motto from Brooke and I just embraced it because it's how I already you know approach things and basically what it is is that circumstances can trigger uh, thoughts thoughts cause feelings feelings cause, drive actions and actions give us our results and the results that we get usually will reconfirm the original thought. Okay, so I'll kind of break that down a little bit. Circumstances, which this right here was super powerful for me, okay? Circumstances are things we have no control over. 
And in all my experience studying health and mindset and mental health, wellness, um, a lot of it is we spend an inordinate amount of energy trying to control things we were never meant to control. And I personally, this is just a, this is anecdotal, but I personally believe that a lot of the uh, mental, physical, and emotional dis-ease, if you will, come from us trying to control things we have no control over. It takes an inordinate amount of energy to do that. Um, and so just even understanding what you control and what you don't control, that alone is powerful. Now, that brings me to what you actually do control. You don't control what happens in life, but you do control what you think about it. Now, some people are going to fight me on that. And they're going to be like, well, yeah, I do have control because I, I set this goal and I make it happen. But yeah, think about this. There are people who do all the right things. They do everything that, you know, they're supposed to happen that they're supposed to do to achieve a goal and it doesn't work out. Maybe the, there's a market fluctuation. Maybe something else happens that they, that's unexpected. You know, family member dies. Uh, they get hurt. They, get, they can't perform anymore. Something happens that they couldn't have anticipated and they have no control over. That's your circumstances. But then, and my analogy for this is you, we've all seen these kind of things. Well, you'll see maybe, um, I'll think about Isaiah Thomas is a good example, the basketball player from back in the day. He came from a very, very bad neighborhood, like really bad, <laughs> okay? Now, there were other people, neighbors, friends of his that came up in the same neighborhood. He became super successful as a, a athlete and business person where some of those other people, same circumstances, became you know, self-destructive or destructive toward others. The only difference is the mindset, okay? Now, Isaiah Thomas had a coach, his mom, because his mother was not going to tolerate him hanging out in the streets and not you know, applying himself and being his best self at each moment, okay? Um, now, the thing is, is most people think, oh, my feelings, I just feel this way, you know, George, you know, hurt my feelings. And we are programmed to that from childhood. Oh, did Rasul hurt your feelings? Did Susie hurt your feelings? And if you think about it, no one can actually hurt your feelings. No one can actually make you happy or sad. No one can make you anything. We don't have that uh, level of power. Now we have influence to the level that other people allow us to have, but we don't have that power. So if someone does what they do, and we choose how to think about it. And based on how we're thinking about it, that generates a feeling. And a feeling is simply a vibration in your body. And it's usually described by one word, happy, sad, angry, shame. And what happens is, is when we understand, like for instance, I know sometimes people might have, a, I remember hearing an example where a woman um, had lost her husband. And she was telling a friend and the friend was like, oh, how are you feeling? And because the friend didn't check in. The woman was like, oh, I feel great. I, was, I couldn't wait to get rid of that bum. You know what I mean? So you just don't, you can't assume, you don't know. Her perspective was, wow, I'm free now. He's gone. I don't know that sounds a little cryptic, but you know, he's gone. I can now live my life the way I want to. Now she could have done that anyway, but in her thinking, she felt like she couldn't. So when he was gone, she felt, because her thinking changed, she felt like, uh, you know, she could do what she wants. Now, those feelings, that energy is going to have an outlet. It's going to drive actions. Usually if we're angry, we'll do something either toward ourselves or toward others. Then what happens is we get a result from that because we live in a cause and effect universe. That's just the way it is. But most people live at, uh, at the effect of life versus recognizing what part of the cause they have control over. And what people normally do, this is where a coach comes in, most people are trying to change their results by changing their actions. And they keep going in a loop. And what had the problem with that is they never get down to the root cause. Like the type of coaching I do is I call it uh, causal coaching. Let's get down to the root cause of why is this even happening? And once you get down and understand your thinking around certain circumstances in your life, that can just have a domino effect and change everything. Mm, and that's it's pretty powerful. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, I imagine that uh, there's some kind of diagram somewhere, but uh, you yeah. know, this this <laughs> idea of yeah, you can you can change. You can you're responsible for the thoughts, and yeah. then it's like from there, everything tends to flow. 
Um, yeah. I can send you a diagram. I, I didn't even think about it. I can send you a, a visual representation of it. So if you, you know, make it available to your people, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put it in the notes of the video. Yeah. That, okay. That'd, that'd Beautiful. Be yeah. Awesome. Um, so one, another thing you talk about is, you know, this is related, like story versus fact. So tell us what you mean by that. Yeah. Uh, everybody didn't know this, but everybody is in the uh, storytelling business. You know, we look at authors and movie makers and uh, book writers and we're like, wow, that's so amazing. We all do that. We all tell stories. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, this is way back in the day, like uh, mid 90s. I used to work at uh, Columbia University, graduate school of business. And, you know, the, you know, we were, I worked in administration. So there were certain people that we were kind of close, a little group. And so they, one time uh, we were going to a social event within the same building and they had food and everything. And across the um, room, I saw a friend of mine who was looking my way. And, she, you know, and so I said hi. And she completely ignored me. And immediately, I was like, what's up with that? What did I do to her? Was she upset with me? What did I do? You know, and I started, I started weaving this, this tale of how, you know, and I, so because I thought she snubbed me, I started to defend and react like, well, later for you, you know, and I get all uh, you know, up in my feelings, as they say today. And later on, when I talked to her about it, come to find out, she was thinking about something else that had happened right before that was kind of you know, intense problem, and she didn't even see me. So I created this whole narrative based on uh, very little context. And that's what we all do. We, we develop stories, like we do it so quickly. Usually, unfortunately, it's geared toward the negative. Either, like what we'll do is I, uh, most people don't know on science, I study, I geek out on some of the science stuff when it comes to the body and the mind. But we have what's called mirror neurons, and that's part of our nervous system. And if you notice, if you see two, usually I'll just use this example, you see two uh, ladies who are at, a, I'll just say, a bar or whatever, and they're hanging out in their besties, you'll notice, if you just look from the outside, that their body language will be very matched. And it's because their mirror neurons are causing them, because they're in sync with each other, are causing them to model each other. And we normally do that. So if somebody comes to you, like somebody will they come to you uh, in an angry manner. So what you do is you will mirror them. We don't even realize we do this. We'll get upset. They made us upset because they're angry at us. We'll defend and we'll get angry back at them. So we'll accuse them of what we're doing to them. It's really kind of ridiculous, but we do it automatically. <laughs> and uh, so the whole idea is when you can look at the facts and the facts are something that if everybody was looking at it would agree like say you have a brand new red car that would be provable in a court of law you could prove that now how you feel about the red car that's that's where you start to get into story that's your thoughts and that that right there that one thing for me at least i found it to be life-changing because when i can question myself on okay what okay what are the real facts about this that changes uh, and helps me to stay, keep myself in check about where I'm going with my stories. And you can tell whatever story you want. Yeah. That's, that's where your power is. You can't change that other person, which is a circumstance or circumstance that happened in life, like the economy, who's president, who's not president, you know, your neighborhood, whatever happened. But you can't change the way you think, you, you know, what you're telling yourself, what you're making it mean. Super powerful. Just that one thing. If that's all you get from me today, that right there will change your life. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, it reminds me of, um, you know, like, I think my, my wife says this, like when, when something, when someone like, you know, cuts us off in traffic or whatever, right? It's like, all right, they're a jerk, you know, where typically that's the, that's the instant story. Like they're, they're just a jerk. They don't care about other people. Or, you know, we could say, my God, they're rushing to the hospital to see their, you know, they're dying, you know, parents or, or, or they're, you right. know, whatever, whatever it may be like they're, they're, they really need to get there, <laughs> you know? And it's like, we don't, we, we can't know, of course, what, which, which story is true, but one story brings compassion and the other story yeah. brings resentment and I, either one could be true or not true. And we can, so we might as well, it's like, it's, it's our life. We might as well generate compassion 
rather than angry. <laughs> well, can, I, can I tell you just one little <laughs> tiny yeah. story? I got, the, I got it from the uh, book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People yes. by Stephen Covey. And if you've read the book, you're familiar with this story. But what happened was he was on a New York City train, subway train, and he was sitting uh, maybe 10 or 10 feet away from this gentleman who had two kids. And the kids were running around like, you know, just crazy, just making all kind of noise. And, and so Stephen said he was really getting a little missed. And then the more he saw it, and it seemed like the man wasn't paying attention and watching over his kids he got more and more upset. So eventually he just got so angry about it. He went over and said to the gentleman, you know, do you see what your kids are doing? And the man was really kind of in a fog and he said, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, their mother just died and, and they don't know what to do. I don't either. And immediately he shifted from anger into compassion because now he had a fuller context of what was really happening in that moment. And it changed everything. And when I listen to that story, that changed things for me. And I try to, you know, think about because I've done that. I've gotten cut off in traffic and been really like, are you kidding? I'm a New Yorker. So, you know, like, you kidding me? You know, whatever. I get all upset. And then I've cut people off, not meaning to, and couldn't say I was sorry. And, you know, we had the windows up or whatever. And I realized, wow, maybe that's what the other person did to me. They weren't trying to cut me off. It was just, you know, one of those things that happened. My God, yeah, and I think I think e eventually, you know, if and when we can see everything and <laughs> and like really understand everyone's stories, if we were yeah. able to, we would have so much compassion. I mean, even if yeah. somebody were cutting us off maliciously because yeah, you know, they 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 say, oh, you, you slow driver or whatever, or or they judge us in some way, they cut us right. off. Like if we understood the story of their life. And yeah. kind of what they've gone through and their upbringing and what kind of suffering they're going through. My God, there would be waves of compassion that came through, you know, and it's just, we can generate that. It's, it's, I think yeah. it's, that's beautiful. So one other, con one more concept and then we'll start wrap it up. You, you talk about buffering. What does that, what does that mean it, briefly? Oh boy, this is a real good one because I've done this. <laughs> and, you know, what happens is, is usually we're taught in our society and I can't really speak about other countries, but, I, since there is the human experience, you know, we're taught to avoid discomfort in, in our society as much as possible. And what happens is, so what happens is we all love when things feel great, you know, joy, love, happiness, that kind of thing. But then we don't like shame. We don't like fear. We don't like anger. So things don't feel good. And so what we'll do is because we think it's not supposed to be like that, or we don't like that feeling, or we want to avoid it. So what we'll buffer with is we'll buffer with you know, drugs or porn or internet or work or uh, anything that uh, distracts us. We, I have found that we humans are brilliant at deceiving and distracting ourselves. You know, and I'm mainly speaking about myself. <laughs> you know, so what happens is, is we will tend to, like, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this, but I have, where there'll be something that I, I really don't want to do because I think it's going to be unpleasant. And I'll procrastinate and I'll procrastinate and I'll procrastinate. Like one night it was, um, I let my kitchen, you know, I live alone. So I let my kitchen just get, you know, nobody's here but me. Somebody's going to see it. So I let the kitchen get just a total mess. And I came in every day from, you know, whatever I was doing outside. And it just looked horrible. But I didn't do anything about it because I didn't really want to do it. And then one night, it was like 10 o'clock at night. And I just got, I was done. I was done looking at a, a horrible, dirty kitchen. And so I just cleaned it up. It took me about 30 concentrated minutes of just effort. And when I got done, I was like, why was I making that a big deal? It wasn't even that, it wasn't even that. It was like, poof, I just did it. Many times it's easier to just do the thing than to think about doing the thing, you know? Mm. And so a lot of times we buffer. And so for instance, because I do live alone, you know, there are times that I feel lonely. And in the past, what I would do is, oh, I'm feeling lonely, so I'll turn the TV, you know, I don't have a TV, but I'll turn something on, listen to an audio book, or I'll go call up a friend, or I'll go hang out with somebody. Whereas what I learned to do is I just feel lonely. And I say, oh, this is loneliness. So I just feel it. And I say, oh, okay, this is what loneliness feels like as an experience. And I let it, I feel it. And because I'm feeling it, it will eventually pass. And it'll do what it was here to do. It'll teach me what it's here to teach me. 
One is that it enables me to have the compassion for someone else that might be feeling lonely at that moment. That first thing you said, I think is key, is compassion for self and for others. And what happens is we spend so much time resisting and um, avoiding and reacting to our emotions and our feelings that what happens is they get blown, it becomes drama. So instead of feeling the you know, anger, you can just feel anger. Think about, okay, what am I thinking about that's making me feel anger versus blaming it on a circumstance? And it, it might even be justified. Like if there's an injustice that you saw happening, you can feel the anger and then take, you can choose not to uh, react, but to respond and do something constructive with that same energy. But if I'm reacting, I mean, how many people are probably in uh, jail because they did a quick reaction in a moment of anger and did something that changes everybody's life. So, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. So as we wrap up, um, if somebody is watching this, uh, listening to this and they say, well, gosh, Russell, I'd love to work with you uh, as my life coach. Um, how do they move forward? What's the, what's the, uh, yeah. How, how do you work with people? Yeah, the best way is uh, is to go right to my website, which is uh, coachrothpool.com, and you can contact me through my website or through Facebook Messenger. Um, pretty responsive, and uh, the really coaching coaching is an experiential thing, and I offer a what I call discovery session, and in that discovery session, it's usually about fifty minutes to an hour. Uh, we actually find out one if we are a good fit to work together, and if coaching is a good fit for you right now. But we also, many times I've had people have a total change of perspective just from looking at what they think the problem is with someone who doesn't have an agenda. I don't have an agenda because I don't even know what's right for you, but I know how to help you discover what you should be doing next, if anything. Awesome. I will be sure to put the link in the notes of the video, but it's uh, Coach Russell. So it's C-O-A-C-H-R-A-S as in Sam, U-L-C-O-A-C-H-R-A-S-U-L.com. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll put the link. And uh, yeah, like pe you know, people can just contact you through Facebook as well. Uh, it's, yeah. it's easy to reach you, Russell Davis. So um, awesome, man. I really thank you for being here, doing this interview, and I uh, hope people find this helpful. Thanks, Russell, for the work that you do. Well, thanks for uh, having me and uh, letting me have this opportunity to any excuse to get to hang out with you is awesome. <laughs> thanks so <laughs> much, man. Fun. All right. Have a great day. You too.